Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Dirt Bike Channel. I'm your host, Kyle Brotherson, and today we're gonna to be talking about what you should do with your power valve on your KTM TPI bike to make it run spot on. Stick around. Before we get too far into this video, I just want to mention that the sweepstakes for this bike, this 2019 KTM, is on, as well as these other bikes, the uh, Yamaha and the Beta. I pay for all my bike reviews now by giving them away in these sweepstakes, and the way that you can support that guy is by going to dirtbikechannel.com right now, getting yourself a hat, a shirt, a hoodie, tire pumps, all kinds of things. There's tie downs over there, but beware, supplies are limited, and once they're gone, on a lot of these things, they're gone, and I won't be able to get them. Head over to dirtbikechannel.com right now and get entered. Okay, so the reason for this video is I've now kind of gotten to a critical mass where I'm getting a certain number of emails a week or even sometimes per day, like multiple per day on, Kyle, what do I do with my power valve on my TPI bike? So a little history lesson here. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm a mechanic. I'm not a mechanic, I'm not a full-time mechanic. I am just a person who has purchased, I think it is 16 of these KTM and Husky bikes that have the power valve, seven of which, sorry, it actually ended up being eight TPI bikes when I got putting it down, have been TPI bikes. And those are just the ones I've personally purchased. Most of my riding buddies also have these bikes, and so I have helped set up somewhere around 30 or 35 of these bikes, and at least 12 of them have been TPI bikes. Um, so I'm not saying I'm a subject matter expert, I'm just saying I do have a little bit of experience. Ex Sorry, I'm throwing this all over. I do have a little bit of experience on this. So a little bit of a history lesson. On your older KTM bikes, the ones that came with the carburetors, you had your power valve adjustment right here that you could adjust. There's a little brass screw right here. I'll roll a picture of this in. And you could get like a little square tool that you can use to turn that screw. And all we're really doing is we're adding preload or taking preload away from that, the power valve inside, determining, determining when the power valve is gonna come fully open at what RPM. Back in the day, you used to get inside your little kit with jets, you used to get a red spring and a green spring inside here. The yellow spring was already in the bike. And in those days, the yellow spring was the intermediate spring. The red spring was a lighter duty spring, meaning the power valve would come open and faster. And the green spring was a heavier duty spring, meaning the power valve would stay closed longer. When TPI came around, they stopped giving us any jets and we didn't get any of those extra springs. In the early days, they were telling people, hey, don't touch that thing. Uh, because you'll mess up the bike. Realistically, I just think that has to do with emissions. They, we don't have TPI because it's better than carburetors. We have TPI because KTM had to do it to pass emission standards in Europe, blah, 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 blah. So here's where this comes full circle. People are asking what, like is there some magic setting that I need to do, I need to take my thing and I need to adjust my, you know, my power valve to a certain spec. Anyone who tells you like, oh, here's what you have to do on all these bikes, I would suggest that that is not a super informed decision. The reason why I say that is because I, I just told you, I've purchased seven, personally, purchased seven of these TPI bikes and every single one of them has come differently. They all come adjusted differently. They aren't all uniform. They aren't all uniform. Every one of these motors is an individual and for whatever reason, every single one of the TPI bikes I have bought they come adjusted differently. Like this bike was adjusted almost flush with this screw here, this 2019 bike. The other 2019 that I bought on the same day as this one was not adjusted the same way. It was the same bike, but on the same day, it wasn't adjusted the same way. I've seen this time and time and time again. So if you have a blanket statement that says, you just need to go out there and turn your power valve out two turns, that's kind, of a, that's kind of garbage advice, literally. This is just about tuning the bike to your liking. And what I like, you might not like. And so this is about going out there, riding the bike, and getting a feel for how it feels, and then making an informed decision about what to do about it. So I'll give you an example. In uh, 2020, I bought the 2020 KTM 300XC and the 250XC on the exact same day. I, and they weren't adjusted the same. The power valves were not adjusted the same. I rode the 300XC and I rode it for the first hour and a half and I was like, this thing is just, the power just kind of feels muted. The bike just didn't feel like it wanted to wake up. Hey guys, so these are the first few minutes on my 2020 KTM 300XC TPI and I don't like the way the bike's running. 
it won't rev out. So it's kind of pissing me off a little bit. I then adjusted the power valve out after that first ride and I, I turned it out like two full turns. I should mention that I do that at about one quarter turn at a time so that I don't, so I know if I'm going in the right direction. And then the bike livened up exactly to where I wanted it and I was happy with it. The 250XC on the other hand, I didn't need to turn it out nearly as much. I rode that bike, got used to what it was doing and I turned that bike out just a little bit, the 250XC. And these are also the first five minutes of this KTM, 2020 KTM 250 XC TPI. Um, uh, this bike right here, I never really did touch it. This bike came basically all the way out flush and the only thing that I've done in 100 and, I don't know, 125 hours is I've turned it in just a little bit to mute this bike down just a touch. I've also got a 2020 KTM 300 XCW TPI sitting outside and that one I have not adjusted. I, I'm thinking though I'll turn it in and kind of like mute it down a little bit. So right there, I've got four TPI bikes that I've been talking about here, 19s and 20s, I guess five of them. I've bought five of the, between the 2019 TPIs and the 2020 TPIs, I've purchased five of those bikes and they've all been different. They've all needed something a little bit different to satisfy me and satisfy my riding. So the whole point of this video is there is no one silver bullet. There is no like, oh, turn it out two turns or oh, pull it out to flush and then turn it back in one. No, every motor is an individual and they all need to be tuned individually. It's a tuning thing. It's not a just set it thing. Once you get it where you want it, basically you can set it and forget it. But it's just something like that. So be wary if you read on a forum or something and you, and that's the other thing guys, I don't watch a lot of dirt bike videos. I only watch a video from some other producer if somebody has sent it to me multiple times or if it's somebody that I really know who says, hey, you should check this video out. I'm making so many of these videos that I just don't watch other people's stuff. I just, I just need a break from it. So. I'm not out there doing research watching other guys' videos about what they're saying. So I have no idea. I just know that tons of people are emailing me saying, what should I do with my power valve? Should I do this? Should I do that? And they're telling me that they're getting all this information online from people saying like, oh, just do this, just do this. No, no, no. Tune the bike, ride it. They're all individuals. That's the real truth of this. In all the bikes, the 16 that I've bought, 16, 17 that I've bought, and the 30 others, that I've been around and ridden with my friends and different people. They're all individuals. There's no one thing. Anyway, hopefully that information is useful to you guys. If you wanna support Dirt Bike Channel, one of the easiest ways you can do it also is to use the links that are down in the description for Rocky Mountain ATV. I've got top picks over there. So if you click on these links, you can get you know, some ideas for the types of parts that I buy from Rocky Mountain ATV. Super awesome. I'm glad to be working again with Rocky Mountain ATV. Super easy way to support me. And again, you could get entered to win this bike. I will be putting a new top end on this bike and a new oil pump on this bike so that it's fresh and ready to go for the next person that owns it. And obviously the 2020 Yamaha over there and the 2020 Beta, they're gonna be, you know, 20-ish hours, 20, 25 hours. I'm not exactly sure how many hours they'll have on it. So pretty exciting on that stuff. Anyway, I think that's all I've got for you guys. So go ahead and uh, leave a single track. Thanks.